Did you hear that? The music ran completely out. That's because sometimes the computer that I'm working with here in the background, it's a few feet away from uh, the soundboard. So I'm trying to bring up the computer so I can actually get some videotape of this program this morning. And the computer is a bit like an old man sometimes on a really cold winter morning. You know that sound? You may remember it from when you were a kid and you maybe were at your grandfather's house. And, and you heard that noise as he was getting out of bed, that, oh, oh, oh. And then you'd hear your grandmother, who was already downstairs for an hour and a half, working in the kitchen, say, all right, come on, get a move on. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Well, the computer sometimes tends to be like that when I'm working with it in the morning. Seven minutes after 8 o'clock, Bill Colley with you. Thank you for joining me. 50 right now. On our way to uh, high 80s, perhaps again today. And 90 degrees before the end of the week in late September. Well, we'll take it because I still think it's a darn sight prettier than that cold winter morning. And think about that. When it's uh, it's going to be uh, 35, what this computer will actually be doing to me at that point. A lot to talk about today. Have Dr. Jonathan Tripp on the way in just a few minutes from Tripp Family Medicine between 8.30 and 9 o'clock this morning. Also, don't quote me on this, but, you know, I do believe. Well, I'll say I think we have someone coming along from the Twin Falls City Council for a few minutes following 9 o'clock news today as well. But just so much on the agenda. I know a great many of you who are tuning in this morning decided to go to that meeting last night, the public forum that was sponsored by the local newspaper on the Refugee Resettlement Center. And I would be interested in in a couple of minutes getting some of your reactions to what you happen to hear, but I'll tell you something. Looking through some newspaper coverage of this event, You know, that the local paper actually put this together and sponsored it, so its coverage might be somewhat different, let's say, than a a much better newspaper like the Idaho Statesman. Well, I say better because it's larger, it's got a bigger staff, and can do more things just simply because they have a bigger circulation, because they're in a bigger city. It's no reflection on the reporting staff or anyone like that, it's just more resources, if you will. This This is actually coming from... The Idaho Statesman, this is out of Boise, this is its coverage of the events here in Twin Falls yesterday because before last night's forum, some of the speakers actually got together with some of the local elected politicians and had a discussion. Now, the thing that got me, this was open to the media. And if you had had, and knowing elected politicians as I do, because I've been around them for, gosh, even before I got into broadcasting and I was working on political campaigns, I'd been around them for 35 years, if not longer. And they would probably have tougher questions if they were behind the scenes, if they were in a closed-door meeting. But I think the fact that there were people there from uh, from media, news media, somewhat happens to color the situation. I was explaining to Benito Baeza today, there's a reason that I don't go to a lot of these events myself. Uh, it's the same reason I heard Rush Limbaugh once give uh, as to why, unlike a lot of talk show hosts, he won't show up at a Tea Party event because he becomes a distraction. And then he changes the way people either ask questions or answer questions. And and sometimes I think it's just best to stay away for that particular reason. This is coming from the Idaho Statesman's story on, on what was going on with the meeting yesterday afternoon before the public meeting. And it mentions that Representative Steve, uh, Steve Hartkin of Twin Falls had probably the only really serious questions. He was the most vocal, it says, of local officials questioning whether it's a good idea to bring a group of people to the Magic Valley when a substantial number of people are opposed to their coming. Now, there's nothing here, I guess, about security concerns (laughs) and how we vet these people, but it's a a very good political response. In other words, I've wetted my index finger over here, and I'm holding it up in the air, and I'm seeing which way the, the wind blows. Is this really a good idea? And so, therefore, the public input may be having some impact. The fact that someone, you know, we could have 300 people come here or 3,000 and two of them might be bombers is irrelevant to the elected politicians. But on the other hand, your vote come Election Day, that's important. So I was looking through this. It mentions these people were at the meeting, the pre-meeting, the, the political meeting. It says a representative's Lance Clough. He's featured in a, in a picture, in fact, in one of the stories about this in another newspaper. Uh, Steve Hartkin, as we've mentioned, Donna Pence, uh, a liberal Democrat from Gooding, Clark Kaufman, who I've met before from Filer, Twin Falls Mayor Don Hall, Jerome Mayor David Davis, Twin Falls City Manager Travis Rothweiler, and representatives from both U.S. Senator Mike Crapo and Representative Mike Simpson's offices. So at least the folks uh, and at the, the national level, your, con- your congressional delegation, they're interested in this. 
and, and they're looking to get some details too as well. And then I went to page uh, two of this story, and it says, Larry Bartlett, the director of Office of Refugee Admissions, who came to Idaho from Washington to the forum, I wonder you know, if they had to get him a map out to show him where Twin Falls was, did more of the talking than any of the other panelists. His style and sense of humor, the writer says, won loud applause from the Refugee Center's supporters at several points, but seemed to leave the center's opponents cold. Yes, the opponents are cold, mean people, according to establishment media covering this story. A group of people wearing black T-shirts with the logo of the three percenters on them left after Bartlett made a crack about wanting to fill up some of the empty seats in the auditorium with more refugees. Ha, 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 ha. I don't know. It depends on who those refugees happen to be, and that's the argument that we've been making all along. The sun shot! There you go. Bartlett defended the program, according to this writer, in strong terms, calling it a moral obligation. Think about that for a moment. A bureaucrat from Washington comes to Twin Falls and says that he is the arbiter of right and wrong when it comes to morality. Not your local pastor, not even your local imam. He comes to town and he says, this is a moral obligation as a bureaucrat working in Washington with great federal benefits provided by you and a great federal retirement provided by you. I know better and this is a moral obligation. Well, what does he base that upon? Government is not going to dictate to us what morality is. 813, Bill Colley with you on Top Story on News Radio 1310, KLIX and News Radio 1310.com. I also have this. Uh, this comes from the magicvalley.com. With vocal opponents, and here's a quote, it's really hard to hold back. That comes from refugee Adriana Mustafik. She says it's it's not hard to take it personal, or it is hard to take it personally. She thought the opposition was a phase and it would pass, but now she feels if she doesn't say anything, the opposition succeeds. So you have some Bosniak who's come here who, uh, who decided to show up and feels that her presence there and the newspaper finding her and getting her to, uh, to describe that, that somehow she is uh, she's going to overturn public opposition to this. She may be a very nice lady. And most people from the Balkans, they are. I mean, they've gone through absolute, I mean, what's, ha- what's happened in that part of the world. By the way, while Bill Clinton and his wife stood back and watched that happen, well, they did that with Rwanda too. They weren't too terribly interested in the more Olympiclations of what were going on in many parts of the world in the 1990s where some of these people were driven from. And then uh, the, the magicvalley.com also carries this story about that earlier meeting with legislators and, and local uh, city and county, well, no county representatives, I guess, whatsoever. And this is another quote. Uh, this comes from, uh, from uh, Steve Bartlett, or Larry Bartlett, rather, the director of the U.S. State Department Office on Refugee Admissions. So while he was talking with elected politicians, he said, quote, they would not admit somebody if they did not think it was safe to do so, unquote. All right, Larry, why don't you tell us how you go about that? What's the process to determine what is safe and what's not? Well, let's see some hands here. Are you a good guy? Okay. Any bad guys in the room? See, beyond that, how do we know? He gives no explanation on how these people are vetted. Bartlett emphasized that the program helps refugees, but in the end, the refugees must help themselves. To what? Uh... (laughs) Your social services that you as a taxpayer, that that you're already on the hook for in a country with $19 trillion officially in debt, and and now they're asking you for more? I'm sorry, but at some point, there are logical reasons to be asking these questions. You know, you sink the boat, nobody's going to be happy. You can reach our program today by giving me a telephone call. As I say, if you were at the program last night, I'd like to hear your reaction. You can reach the show at 736-0300, 736-0300. And, you know, did you, did you have your mind changed? I mean, there's a question for you. Did you hear all of these bureaucrats and these people who have skin in the game as they gave their explanations and told you it was the right thing to do morally because, well, I guess this Bartlett is also serving as Pope now too. Did they convince you that this is the right thing to do? Have you been swayed? Which was the whole goal of this event, wasn't it? So I'd like to I'd like to hear those uh, those thoughts, if you have any of those. <clears throat> I have to throw that out there. Maybe you walked out of there and you were just zombie like afterward because you thought to yourself, how how deep can this get? 
You're up next. You're on the air with Bill Colley on News Radio 1310, KLIX and News Radio 1310.com. Yeah, good morning, Bill. Well, the whole thing is he, he was trying to convince us that they'd do a vetting process, but since Syria is a failed state, we have no. He admitted he his his own words said we have no boots on the ground. So when they when they interview these people, we just have to take their word. And of course, part of the Quran and understanding that some of us actually met with four. There was not just two. There were four people, bureaucrats that came to Washington. I'm not sure what two of them were about, but three of us had a chance to to talk to them one-on-one. And Larry Bartlett was clueless about Islam or anything, any of objectives or anything like that. It was really obvious in talking with him. But so this no boots on the ground, and he tried to explain that they interview these people, but part of the Quran says you lie, the end justifies the means until you take control, and then you can't lie, but that by that time it's too late. And that's what people have to understand, that Islam is in phase three, total war, death to America with action. And folks, if we don't just keep this thing stirred up, regardless of what's happened, the benefits or the negative things about the refugee center at this point, we are in total war with Islam and people better realize that. And so we need to stop all immigration coming into this country. And even locally, it was pointed out Uh that these people are not being treated or not giving the services. They're just 90% of them are on welfare and food stamps and they, they aren't independent after a short period of time. That's what's brought out as well. And, and, and thank you for the call. Bartlett made some mention of that, too, that you reach a period where he says, you just don't know, I mean, that they have to take care of themselves. All right, well, if they can't take care of themselves, then what happens? They don't just go away. They don't wander out into the desert and, and you know, disappear. Well, maybe they do. They don't head off to a training camp somewhere and disappear. Well, maybe they do. So what they, if they can't take care of themselves, they have to get someone else to do it, the social safety net, as it's called. Someone then picks up the tab for all of these people. Am I correct uh, that, that that'll be you and that they'll be down in the lines at the social services office? How come no one wants to address these issues? Oh, but it's a moral obligation. Don't determine that for me. I have a church that, that does that, and, and I can do that on my own. I don't need some bureaucrat making a quarter million dollars a year who we're going to support well into his retirement, probably at half pay for the next 30 years after he leaves. I don't need him telling me the difference between right and wrong. Bill Colley with you on Top Story on News Radio 1310, KLIX, com. 51. Hey, Dr. Jonathan Tripp coming up in about 15 minutes. I have a caller who's been very patient waiting on hold, and we'll get to that caller in just a moment, but I do want to mention again, Dr. Jonathan Tripp coming up in, oh, about 10 minutes or so on the program with us on News Radio 1310 KLIX and News Radio 1310.com. He's talking skin care today because after the summer, especially if you were out a lot uh, in the sun, and a lot of you don't have any choice, that's where you work, and you have, you know, perhaps uh, looking at your skin and you're thinking it's a little damaged, he's going to talk about how you can maybe revive your skin to some degree. And other, other areas you might have to be concerned about if you get a lot of sun exposure. Remember, his office is located on Fillmore Street, directly across from the main post office in Twin Falls. Life's too short not to feel good. Calder, thank you very much for your patience. You're on the air on Top Story. Yeah, well, you know, all this talk about moral obligation, and I have a moral obligation. My moral obligation is to protect my family and protect my community, and I'm going to do that. But how, you know, how can we determine with refugees coming in that nobody knows anything about and and all of this, uh, you know, that puts a, a stumbling block in my way of being able to protect my family and protect my community because it throws so many unknowns right in the in the mix. And you know your government, thank you for the call. Your government, that's its main that's its federal government's primary responsibility is to protect 
the citizenry of the United States. That's an excellent point caller is making this morning. You can reach the show at 736-0300. That's 736-0300 here in the first half hour. We're getting your thoughts on this forum last night that was sponsored by the local newspaper at the College of Southern Idaho and stacked with all of the people who actually have skin in the game, as we mentioned earlier. In other words, people who are set to profit from this refugee resettlement program. You're up next, and you're on the air with Bill Colley on News Radio 1310 KLIX. Yes, good morning, Bill. Uh, I wonder how many people out there know what a fifth column movement is. That's and from that's, the old uh, Spanish Civil War. That's right, and that's exactly what's happening here right now. Uh, the uh, You've got people internally in this country, and Richard Nixon was fond of using that phrase, uh, and it became a hallmark of him uh, when he was first in politics in the 50s. And he would use that phrase, and the, the left would just get so angry. But it's a description of people in this country who are working to undermine the United States, American citizens who are treasonous. That's right. And uh, people don't realize that yet. When are they going to open their eyes when it's too late and we've got Sharia law in this country? You know, and every time I hear people in media say, oh, well, you know, who's 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 calling for Sharia? Well, it's happening. Uh, the, 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 the clock boy's dad wants it. It's happening in Minneapolis, Minnesota. It's happening in many other cities around the country. And all you need to do is look at some of these videos coming out of Europe and realize it doesn't take long before that call starts. That's right, Bill. Keep on doing what you're doing. You're doing a great job. Thank you much. Uh, checks in the mail. You're up next. You're on the air with Bill Colley on News Radio 1310 KLIX and News Radio 1310.com. Boy, you and Nathan Harper, a couple of delirious fools. Oh, another another a great call. Uh, yeah, okay. And do you want to explain why? All right. We got it. 736-0300. 736-0300. You know what I'll do? I'll call in and I'll shout. And then I'll hang up. And everyone will go, wow, gee willikers, I guess that guy's right. <laughs> Not a lot going on upstairs. Elevator doesn't go to the top floor. Not the sharpest tool in the shed. Two beers short of a six-pack. You get my drift? 827. Bill Colley with you on Top Story 54. And you're up next. Uh, and you're on the air, in fact. This is actually a personal conflict for me because on the one hand the christian in me says you want to take care of the people that are in need on the other hand i am an american and this is my country and i can definitely see what they're doing there there's no doubt in my mind that we will have terrorists here on our soil and anyone who thinks that it won't happen because you're just loving them and and that the love is going to overcome is so naive Yep. There is no way we will come out of this in one piece. The country will be torn apart, I, and but, I, maybe, I, but maybe we deserve it. I, but I'm not the judge of that. I think a lot of people do feel that way from a certain, you know, if you have a certain faith perspective. Thanks for the call. You don't have to go far from, from our studios to find people who are very much in need. And all of these, uh, these liberal do-gooders who are trying to tell us what right and wrong are, what are you doing for them? Seriously, what are you doing for them? I mean, I see the hovels that these people are living in. You're not going to improve their lives at all by doing this. You're up next. It's 828. Hello? Hello, Bill? Yes, yeah, speaking. Uh, I was at the meeting last night. Matt Christensen went through every one of the questions before they were read. He interpreted them into what he wanted to say, not what the people wanted to know. My husband and I got up and left after two hours. Two hours? How could you stand it? Well, my husband also spoke at the CSI board meeting for his three minutes of claim to fame the night before. And... Uh, I want to know why, when these people were introduced, why they weren't given a time limit of five minutes only. Yeah, I, I, I you know, that's a good question. Uh, I now the questions being cherry picked. It is a forum that was sponsored by the newspaper, and they flew all of the people in. So I guess that becomes their prerogative. What what's going to be asked? But a, a true public forum is just bringing people in, and I realize. They feel if they allow people just to come up to the microphone, draw numbers and come up to the microphone, they might get a question they don't like. 
But you I'm know sure what? They didn't. That's a reflection of the community's feelings, isn't it? Well, you know, I don't think anybody had any guts. We were willing to stand up and say the things that we believed in. And I wrote five extra questions. Uh, my husband wrote, I don't know how many, uh, including about the illnesses. They had a doctor on the panel. And he said they're all tested for all kinds of diseases and everything before they're let in. What he did not say is they don't test the people that don't okay that. If those people don't want to be tested for diseases and given shots, they don't get the test. God let you on on that note, Dr. Jonathan Tripp up next. It's 830.